Okay, Mayor, we are good to go. Okay, here we go. Let's go to the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice of 2020 meeting dates were posted online on January 9th, 2020, and posted on the Bulletin Board of Borough Hall. Action may now be taken. Please join me in the flag salute. <laughs> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic for which it stands, and one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and because I've experienced this in other WebEx and Zoom call meetings, that. Uh, if everyone could, if we're not actively speaking, make sure your mute button is on because I, I'm hearing a lot of feedback. Just throwing that out there. Adam, there's some people uh, in the public who are not muted based on the. Yeah. We're all trying to do our best. So, you know, let's continue to just do our best. But if you can mute your phone, if you're not about to give us a roll call, that'd be great. So, Adam, can we, can we get a roll call? Yes. Columbus. Here. Mary. Here. Hughes. Here. Moore. Here. Range. Here. Zappa. Here. Lee. Here. Okay. <clears throat> Real quick, as I've done the last um, couple of meetings that we've had via WebEx uh, under these unusual times, I would like to just open it up with a couple of comments or um, some comments. Uh, so as we begin our meeting, I want to once again express my sincerest thanks to the Highbridge Office of Emergency Management, all of our first responders, the crew of the Highbridge Department of Public Works, and all the staff, Bonnie and Adam, and everybody else at Borough and Hall at Borough Hall. I continue to be impressed with your resilience and commitment to serving our community during this unprecedented time. As of this evening, the number of positive cases of COVID-19 in the state has grown to 99,989, so just shy of 100,000 cases, which is more than double since our last council meeting. The total number of COVID-related death, deaths now stand at 5,368. In Hunterdon County, we have 434 positive cases and 22 COVID-related deaths. As of yesterday, Highbridge has 14 positive cases, and our thoughts continue to be with each of these individuals and their, fam and their families. Additionally, Highbridge lost two of our own. Um, Mr. Henry Hagen passed away recently at the age of 93. Mr. Hagen was an active member of our community. He, he was a graduate of Highbridge, excuse me, Highbridge High School and went on to enlist in the Navy. He served Highbridge as a councilman, a member of the planning board, a volunteer fireman, a member of the Knights of Columbus, and the Highbridge American Legion Post 188. Also, Mr. Robert Smith, also of Highbridge, passed away at the age of 87. Mr. Smith served in the U.S. Navy and went on to become a corrections officer with the State of New Jersey Department of Corrections. He was also a member of the Highbridge American Legion Post 188 and a member of the Highbridge Fire Department where his son, Chief Jeff Smith, and grandson, Deputy Chief, Deputy Chief Sean Smith, currently serve. I would like to invite all of us on council and everyone watching from the community to join me now in a brief moment of silence for Mr. Henry Hagen and Robert Smith and their families, and for all of New Jer our New Jersey neighbors who have been taken or have lost a loved one to this virus. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Now I'd like to get a motion to dispense with the reading of the April 8th, 2020 regular minutes. Move. Second. 
Roll call. Columbus. Yes. Barry. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Moore. Yes. Strange. Yes. That. Yes. Motion to approve the April 8th, 2020 regular minutes. Move. Second. Second. Uh, roll call. Columbus. Yes. Barry. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Moore. Yes. Strange. Yes. Zappa. Yes. On to public comments. It is the policy of the borough council that all public comments on an issue shall be limited to five minutes per person and no person may make more than one comment per subject. Comments may be made on any subject pertaining to borough issues. Comments pertaining to public hearings should be saved for that section of the agenda. No debating between residents. Comments should be addressed to mayor and council at the public microphone. So if you have a public comment and you're um, a member, you know, watching on TV, please raise your virtual hand and Adam will bring you up to the microphone. Yeah, yeah by clicking on your name, uh, you can choose to raise your hand if you do have a question uh, and then we can acknowledge you for your five. Okay, I don't see any hands up at this time. No hands. Any call in user two? Anything? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> okay, Mayor, I think we are good to proceed. Okay, on to the public hearings. Uh, Ordinance 2020 024 appropriating an additional $80,354 from the grant fund for Streetscape Phase 2. Motion to open the public hearing. Move. Second. Second. Uh, roll call. Columbus. Yes. Barry. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Moore. Yes. Range. Yes. Zappa. Yes. We are open. Okay, we're open. So um, if anyone wants to make a public comment, it's it's pretty simple here. I don't think it's very controversial. We're getting an extra $80,000, $354 in grant money for Streetscape, which as of right now is still on schedule to begin this spring. Hard to believe, but um, we're looking forward to it. We hope it does continue. And uh, if anyone has any questions or comments from the public, please raise your hand and we'll hear you out. Any anybody from council have any questions or comments? Streetscape. No? Streetscape. We have a we have a, a call on Monday for like a preliminary kickoff uh, on it. So just let everybody know. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um if there's no other questions or public comments, a uh, motion to close the public hearing for ordinance 2020-024. Move. Move. Second. Second. Okay. Roll call. Columbus. Yes. Barry. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Moore. Yes. Strange. Yes. Zappa. Yes. Excellent. Uh, motion to adopt ordinance 2020-024. Move. Move. Second. Roll call. Columbus. Yes. Barry. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Moore. Yes. Green. Yes. Zappa. Yes. Okay. Okay. On to the discussion items. Um, first up, um, <laughs> I've asked this to be added. We have a number of May and June borough events. Um, that you know we haven't really made any official decision about postponing or canceling and i, I know that uh, natalie had an events committee meeting virtual meeting last week to discuss some of these things and i thought we should have kind of an open conversation about it um yeah. you know a lot of the, a lot of these things logistically taken a tremendous amount of planning so even though it may take place in june and we don't know what's going to happen you know we it just probably doesn't make sense to 
guess whether or not we're going to be able to have it at this point. So Natalie, why don't you leave okay. this? Well, we have about nine different events going on between um, May 3rd and June 13th. And for, off of the events committee, what we have is um, the ha High Bridge Patriots, uh, High Bridge Day at Patriot Stadium, which we're waiting to hear back from them to reschedule. That doesn't take place in here in High Bridge anyway, but uh, nonetheless, we're looking at a summer date for that. Um, we do have our Soapbox Derby, which takes a lot of planning. Um, and the chair has asked if we could consider November 14th or the 21st. Um, I had chatted with Councilman Zappa after um, the committee meeting and he suggested, which I haven't had a chance to speak with Aaron Delgado, but um, possibly an August date. So um, I don't know what council thinks about Soapbox, but there is a lot of planning that goes into that. But one thing um, also that we need to consider through all of this is um, the funding. Our sponsor drive starts in February, and of course, who supports us are our local businesses, and they're going through an extremely hard time right now, so um, I can't expect them to give us anything. We need to go support them, um, because that's that's the heartbeat of our community. So with that, um, we may, down, I, I, what I recommend for, and I'll, I'll read off the list of, the different events that we have going on. But what I recommend for us to do is to reschedule a lot of these events into the fall to give us time to think about what we can do. And of course, with the events committee, we can see how we could possibly still have the events with cutting back on certain things and kind of doing it um, a little differently than we normally do it. But I think we can make those decisions later. But for right now, let me read you off the list of what's going on. For um, the townwide garage sale, that's May 16th. We have uh, the concert series that starts May 30th. So we have May 30th and June 13th, two concerts that were scheduled. Um, we have the movies uh, in the Commons, which that would that was scheduled to start June 5th, and I believe the next two weeks out after that was the second movie. June 6th, Soapbox Derby. And then we had free fishing day on the 7th, adventure race on the 7th, and Pooch Parade, which was the 25th anniversary um, of Pooch Parade on June 13th. Now, Ruby Reuter, who plans that out, suggested we reschedule that for October 10th with a rain date of October 11th. Um, so right now, I guess what I'd like to ask council is, um, you know, do you agree with, let's we give these some dates into the fall, um, leave our July, August, mainly what we have in July, August are the concerts and leave that be as it is now. And then as we move forward into the coming months, um, decide what we're able to do. Yeah, I think that's, I think that that's a good idea. Sense. I think it's a good idea too. Like Natalie said, you know, we, we talked a little bit um, about it or text a little, a little bit about it. It's, you know, the soapbox derby in November, I, I think maybe a little bit too chilly for it or, you know, but, uh, and then, but we have soccer hopefully in the fall that starts in September and runs through November and that happens every Saturday morning. So that would really take a big bite out of uh, the soapbox derby attendance probably, mm -hmm. um, or racers even, you know, so if we could, can. Could we move? the soapbox derby to the afternoon of a Saturday or not? Yeah, we talked about that too. I mean, we talked, we actually kicked around a lot of ideas like an afternoon, you know, but it, you know, the, it works best doing it in the morning because we have to close the road. So obviously that's a the road know, closure is a good five hours. So morning seems to always work. Another idea we, we thought of was yeah. possibly combining it on, on community day, but community day will be a very, if we do, if we're able to do community day, it'll probably be a very different community day. Um, and the events committee talked about how we could possibly have a community day that could support um, the, the small businesses, the local businesses that have supported us through the years, because of course our main sponsor for community day is ShopRite. So, with that, they're doing so much right now to feed families that don't have food. So that would completely would be a completely different type of community day, but we could potentially 
Um, it would be a very busy day. <laughs> we could potentially do soapbox that day. Um, I don't know. There's a lot, lot to think about. Um, but I think again, for right now, I think, you know, we could pick our tentative dates um, over the next. You know, I don't think we need to pick them right away. Although, of course, with soapbox derby, we do have to reach out to the uh, eventually to the freeholders uh, for to approve closure of the road so that we'd have to talk to Chief Bartman with generally how long that takes to get that. Um, so there's some little details we have to work out, but I think we'll, you know, this, this town is awesome with planning events. So I'm sure we'll figure out how we can still manage to have some type of events this year. I think the big thing is, is that, you know, we don't really plan on you know, there's a, there's a lot of places that have already said, we're not doing any events in 2020. That's it, we were canceling, you know? And and I, I think it's nice if we have something that we can hopefully look forward to, even if it, you know, if it's in the fall or uh, mm -hmm. something. So if we could get a few of the events in or a couple of concerts or whatever, I think it would be great. So, you know, obviously like, you know, um, uh, Mayor had said, May and June are probably, probably not gonna happen, May for sure. and uh you know you know you can't plan anything for june because it's just too close yeah i, I would add that i i think it's hard to even plan anything for the fall um it's for you know because a lot of places just don't even know and i think yeah. you know, for soapbox just talking about soapbox november it's i mean i just just don't see that as the ideal month of the year for soapbox, if we could squeeze it into community day, I mean, I actually was an advocate for that a while ago, but uh, understanding that, you know, there's concerns around that too, but. Um, yeah, but community day is also there. I believe that's usually right around the first day of soccer. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, it's everything at once. Yeah, everything at once. We even yeah. say you know, about Sunday, but you know, the church, if the, if everything's back up and running and, and the church is having services on Sunday morning and. So the road closure would be a problem then too. So mm -hmm. it's it's a it's well, do we have alternative, one alternative for yeah. August and then see where we're at. You know, well, Chris, you yeah, you suggested August, right? End of August. Yeah. yeah. And I I also think we could possibly with soapbox derby do it in such a way where we we could distance ourselves if we're still at that point. Um, it's just really at the starting point of the uh, race where we get you know unless we just do it by family units, but those are details we could work out later. But if we do have soap box, we do have, we do have to figure out a date just because of the logistics with the county. You know, we, I mean, at least within the next month or two, we need to figure that out, I'm sure. And the other thing to think about is the streetscape project also. Mm. Ah. Oh, ooh. yeah. When is that, Bonnie, when, when are the, or you don't know until your chat on Monday or yeah, two years ago. Yeah, we're having our pre-construction meeting on Monday. So uh, we're hoping to start sooner rather than later. Um, yeah. But I don't know what the, um, how long Time frame. Take. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is, well, what I guess we could, that, we haven't any other streets in Highbridge. Like what about like uh, one of the streets off a of church? You know, they have pretty well, Washington would be quite, quite a race. It'd be nice and smooth and steep, but I don't know, uh, <laughs> safety wise. Yeah. <laughs> um that would have to be considered yeah. and maybe taken for a test you'd drive have to, you'd have to require um, roll cages well if we started <laughs> if we started maybe uh just a portion way up mill street right we didn't have to start all the way up if we well that's true too we could we could consider that's that true. and if we're if we do decide to do it on park if we do decide to do it on community day i think it would eliminate having to get the approval from the county because it's not a main county road it's something that definitely we can consider that sure i know if the streetscape going on we may need mill street as a alternative route so that might not work either yeah. so um it uh, might be best uh, not only to push it off to say august if not september if possible but to look for another road that maybe we could use and you know if it has to be put off till next year you know we you know, blow have a blowout next year and try to make it twice as good. Yeah. <laughs> we can. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's just an unfortunate circumstance. But I, you know, I wanted to bring this up as a discussion item because obviously, soapbox derby 
you know, it's a tough call to, to just say that we're going to have to postpone that, but I think it's probably the best case scenario right now. Right. So, so for right now, um, and I, I think we can put this on to the next council meeting, um, but I would like to, at least with, with Pooch Parade and the townwide garage sales, to have those rescheduled for September, for dates for September and October. And um, the only other events were the, are open houses for the Solitude, Solitude House, but that's not a problem to reschedule. But the main ones were those two. So if we could do that for the next council meeting, I can send Adam the dates for that. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Yep, yeah. sounds good. And then we can, and Bonnie, we can see what happens on Monday. Yes. And then talk about that and decide if, um, you know, because that that's a big impact. That, that I think that would probably be the determining factor with soapbox. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bring it up at the meeting and see what the uh, time frame is. Okay. Okay, great. Um, any other thoughts, Natalie, or? No, that that's about it um, for now. Okay. Yeah. Um, discussion item B is trail signs, which I, you know, we added it as a discussion item. There's also a resolution on the consent agenda. I think that we don't really need to have a discussion, but Steve, certainly if you want to talk about well, those. That the only thing I would say is that um, I, I think it's important for people to understand that our approval of what the signs are going to say and uh, the idea that we're trying to continue moving when in, in ways we can moving forward doesn't mean the trails are open um you know yes we want to have safety so we've got the big yellow sign that says don't go on there you know we want signs that inform people but but we're not trying to attract people to the to the park by doing that um the, the signs that have been suggested are just the final step in in all of the steps of developing that and um and they include the rules and safety stuff and all that um, yeah and they're all in the supporting documents that are posted online right. for people to look at um yeah that's a good point i'll just add because you know i think we're all starting to get itchy and some <laughs> of our trails are very tempting to go onto especially in quiet Highbridge, but um, you know, until we get some further direction from the governor, I think we're just going to play it nice and safe and, and keep those closed for the time being. Um, I do know, just again, totally off topic. I do know that the dog park is so close to being open too, and if we can get these closer and have a nice, quiet, soft opening, maybe Highbridge only. You know, if we can work that out, I don't, I don't know, Barry, what you would say. You don't have to say anything well, right now. It's just. <laughs> I mean, one thing I think that's worth noting is that, you know, I know there's some, uh, I think we all have mixed feelings about the closing of our trails or parks or whatever here in Highbridge, but um, we, we can't be open if everyone else is closed. Um, if we open up and it becomes known that our trails or parks or anything is open, we will be mobbed. Um, I mean, because all of the other counties are closed. I mean, we will have mobs. So we really have to, at this point, you know, whether people agreed with the decision or not, right now we all have to kind of stick together and do the same thing. So like you said, take direction from the state and county and uh, make sure that we're in line with them. Otherwise, we'll get swamped. Yeah. And I think that was the goal in closing Nassau, et cetera. And the dog park and the south trails are not even open yet technically anyway. But um yeah, I, I agree with that a whole 100%. So the next uncomfortable discussion item we have COVID related is the summer rec program, which mm -hmm. um, Bonnie and I have spoken many times. And I think Steve, you have also been included on some emails from Barb Kinski. It's heartbreaking. Um, I really don't, I'm not quite ready to say we're not gonna have a summer rec program yet. I see other municipalities in um, Clinton Township, Town of Clinton are still planning to have their summer rec. I just don't, I don't see how we can put the, the proper planning together and get the people hired and working papers and, you know, bouncy how, you know, how do you actually plan for something like that, which we want to be awesome for kids in our current situation. So I'm open. No, to I, I would agree. 
Um, I know that Barb Kinsky has begun thinking is that, are there alternatives? Are there ways to provide entertainment or something to kids to do at their house? Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the biggest sticking point is that the majority of the paperwork gets dealt with and signed for working papers at the high school. And it would be a nightmare trying to get all that. So, I mean, I would love to hold out a little bit of hope, but I don't have a lot that we can get it all done. So it's good that we're looking at alternative ideas that maybe can serve the children of the community in some way. Bonnie, do you happen to know that let's pretend on May 15th that the governor says, okay, we're, you know, doing a, a soft open of the state, how quickly she could turn everything around if we wanted to continue that program? It's July, right? Yeah, it's usually right around 4th of July. Um, I, I don't I don't know. I can't speak for her on how um, well prepared she would be to do that. I think the, the I mean, I know they, hardest they part was the working papers years. and the counselors to get that group together. Yeah, they yeah. normally start preparing in February. And I mean, and, and they're right on it with that, too. It's not just, uh, you know, it's not like, okay, in May, we're going to start getting the kids and working papers. They're right moving forward with, you know, counselor solution and asking everybody to get their working papers because yeah. it takes a little, little bit of time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the planning of it from the adult point of view could be done relatively quickly, but trying to organize the legality of the children working is, is and the paperwork going back and forth is always uh, very difficult. And I think that's the biggest sticking point, unfortunately. Um, I mean, it, it is conceivable. I, I mean, I, anything can happen, you know, as we have all just seen, you but, know, but uh, I don't know. I, I would be willing to bet, I, you know, I mean, obviously we'd have to, we'd have to put it out there, but a lot of those, a lot of the counselors that come uh, back year to year, um, I'll bet they would almost do it as volunteers uh, because a lot of them do like, cause not everybody can work two weeks. We just don't have enough spaces to where we could hire and enough money to hire everybody for two weeks. But a lot of the counselors come and they work two weeks, you know, because first of all, they really love to do it. Second of all, they, they do get volunteer hours towards um, you know, their, their resumes for college and, and, and the like. So it may be possible to even get enough counselor volunteers to do it. And they're uh, 18 and don't need working papers. Yeah, or you're at the age where you don't need working papers. So maybe we give that yeah. a, a, a few more weeks of thought before we, um, I, I, it's just, you know, I know my own, I, I know all your own kids too, also experienced a great summer in those two weeks. So it's just so hard to make that decision. So maybe we give it a little bit more time. Is that everyone okay with that, Steve? I know you're on the recommend. No, I think that I think that's exactly right. I agree. Uh, it, we have a little bit more time to think about it. We can't do anything right now, anyway. <laughs> um, right. And, and let's hold out a little hope and keep looking for possible alternatives. Okay, great. Okay, so on to the consent agenda. We have resolution one one eight through resolution one twenty three. Anybody have anything they want to pull from the consent agenda? Um, I would actually request that we pull 122 for a brief discussion. Okay. Um, do we have to do an amendment, or a resolution or something? No, I think yeah, we there, just... there should be, there should be um, a motion to pull that from the consent agenda. Okay, so then I'd make a motion to pull that from the consent agenda. Second. Okay. Go ahead. Columbus. Yes. Oh, Paul, oh, sorry. Barry. <laughs> Barry. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Moore. Yes. Strange. Yes. Zappa. Yes. <clears throat> okay, Steve, you're on. Oh, okay. Um, I my concern was simply that I, I don't know if this person that this refers to has been rice noticed. 
it it worries it seems a little bit like we are discussing something that is personnel related here i, I just want to make sure that that's okay it is it uh, with is. barry um yeah, rice, Steve, the, the rice notice only applies when you go into executive session um if you're talking okay. about an employee in open public session you don't have to rice notice them um and so the there's no, there's no issue in terms of it okay. um, being discussed and in open session. Should, although I appreciate so, the uh, concern, this person's that, a that's volunteer. That's an issue for closed session. The person's a volunteer. What, what, I'm sorry. Yes. Just a, a, you know, an opportunity to make this more of a, albeit very small, paid position uh, for uh, you know something that's proved to be very important this year. So I mean, do we need to rice notice volunteers? The answer is that you know this affects his employment status because you're giving him a stipend. Um, and if if you were discussing this in executive session, you would rice notice him. The rice okay. notice provides that the person who is being discussed has the option of having the issue discussed in open session. So you don't have to rice notice somebody if you're already discussing it in open session. Oh. Okay. Okay. I mean. I once again, I I have no uh, issue with um, with Joe. I mean, I think he's amazing, and um, and I appreciate everything he does for us. I, it's just that uh, it was. I just wanted to make sure that we're being safe. And uh, I mean, I will say that usually we discuss. I think putting these things on the agenda ahead. I didn't realize that this was coming before I saw the agenda. But I have no issue with 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 Joe or this this resolution. I, that's not that wasn't my concern. So. I just wanted to make sure everything was, you know, going right. That's all. So, I'm, so there you go. I'm done. <laughs> okay, so we're okay to keep that in the consent agenda then? Well, you've already voted to take it out of the um, consent agenda. You can, so I think now you have to have two votes, one on the consent agenda and one on this resolution. I think that's the best way to proceed. Got it. Okay, so let me have a motion to approve consent agenda resolution 118 through 120 and 122 through 120, excuse me, 121 and 123. Move. Second. Roll call. Columbus. Yes. Harry. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Moore. Yes. Strange. Yes. Zappa. Yes. Okay. Okay, and a motion to approve resolution 122 of the consent agenda. Move. Uh, move. Roll call. Se Second. Okay. Columbus. Yes. Barry. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Moore. Yes. Strange. Yes. Zappa. Yes. Okay. Okay, on to the council committee assignments. Um, I think most people know last month we didn't have committee assignments because we really didn't, we kind of had to shut everything down in the borough and, and didn't really have many committee meetings because we were so kind of scrambling with the news of, that was changing every minute of the day. So um, I'd like to give everyone the opportunity to report on your committees. I think in um, this next month, May, we should try to at least have some virtual committee meetings wherever possible and touch base, catch up, see what we can be doing in the background at this point. I mean, at least give us, you know, some way to um, give her some energy that I think we are all building up being indoors this long. And, and certainly there are some ideas we can share around with our committee people. So I'll open it up to Councilman Zappa. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So um, in engineering, we you know we're still working on McDonald Street, or that that work got back underway. There was a little bit of a delay because of uh, we needed to get a pole move that was uh, a problem, and also um, the abutment from the old bridge uh, ran into. But the drainage work is continuing. They're just about down to the post office with the drainage work. Um, so we got a little bit more time with that, and. Uh, once that is done, then the curbs and sidewalks will get done, and then after that we pave it. So it shouldn't be too much longer. Um, it seems like everything is is moving. The, I talked to um, our engineer, the borough engineer. Uh, he's lining up with the contractor to make sure he has his concrete crew ready to go as soon as the drainage work is done. 
Um, and also, as discussed, we have there's a kickoff meeting on Monday for uh, the Streetscape project. Um, with DPW, uh, DPW has there's been a lot of you know the the brush pickup, the the brush, um, the commons drop off brush drop off is still going to be closed until we're allowed to get out and uh, move about again, uh, waiting for the governor's um, okay, do that. But um, DPW crews are working split shifts. You know, we have uh, the guys are not working together, so we're trying to minimize contact between them. Um, they have been picking up bags of brush and leaves that people have been putting out. So please continue to do that if you want your uh, brush and leaves picked up, just put it in the bags and they will pick it up. Okay. Um, they are locating the, they've been locating the curb stops in the, in Solitude Village, which are the water shutoffs for Solitude Village. A lot of them are hidden, missing. They're trying to really to locate everything and get in the GIS or map system so that they know where all the shutoffs are. Um, They've put up signs around uh, around town for everybody to uh, sign up for the PSAs in Highbridge. It's the best way for us to get information out to people in the fastest way. So, you know, this way you, you stay on top of what's going on. Um, and our guys have been also doing some virtual safety classes uh, while this has been going on too to catch up on, on that. And uh, we've been um, interviewing for some new DPW workers as well. Oh, yeah, Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> On to Councilwoman Hughes. All right, well, we had to reschedule our electronics recycling, which was actually going to be tomorrow. And a lot of residents have asked me because they save up all year for this big event. So um, I'm going to talk with the company in mid May, and we're hoping to get it this late summer if we can. So. Hold on to your electronics. We're going that way. We're not going to get rid of it this year. Um, and I have not canceled out, nor have I heard from the document shredding company either. That's scheduled for June 27th, so I'm kind of hanging out there yet, waiting to hear from them before I contact them. That might be possible because it's just a drive-through. One person gets out, dumps their stuff in the container, and goes through. It might still be possible, so I'm waiting to see. I have not canceled that. That's it. Great. Thank you. Councilwoman Moore, finance. Okay, um, the, the budget was adopted uh, last, I believe it was last council meeting. And so that's been filed with the state along with the user-friendly budget as, re as is required. Um, as we had on the consent agenda tonight, um, the, um, the resolution on the agenda that states that the budget was, do was done according to all res relevant rules and regulations. This is required from the CFO, which is Bonnie, uh, when the budget is under local review as we were this year. And then the audit of our 2019 records has begun and because of the COVID um, documents are being scanned to the auditors for their review uh, since our borough hall is closed to the public. And that's pretty much it. Great, Great. excellent. Councilman Strange. There we go. I was muted. Um, <laughs> so we already discussed the uh, rec events and summer rec, which were my first two items. Um, and there is a, like I said, there is a list of ideas that the rec people are trying to uh, talk about and come up with possible alternatives. So hopefully we'll come up with something good and maybe things will change by then. Um, other rec oriented stuff. Uh, we just approved the trail signage. And uh, since I've been sitting in front of the computer teaching kids, I've uh, reworked, updated, um, I think, all but one of the various brochures in town uh, to include also the new businesses that are coming up opening. Uh, how is it Solitude Station and, um, oh, what else? Well, I don't know what's going to be where Miss Riley's is, but... But but uh, adding in some of the newer businesses and updating things uh, as things have changed. Uh, let's see. Um, police and EMS. I, I'm not going to go through the whole police report. There there were a few things probably worth noticing. Uh, we're in communication with the county about the idea of putting a um, 
uh, what do you call it? A pedestrian, there's going to be a pedestrian crossing sign ahead on Fairview Avenue, um, northbound prior to a curve near the elementary school. It looks like the county will be doing that eventually. I don't know when it's going to happen exactly. And we've been communicating with the county regarding having an LED yield sign for the church Fairview intersection, which I think we've over the years were concerned is a, is a bad intersection as you come down and, um, you know, to tell people where to, where they're supposed to go so they don't end up in the middle of town in a big truck. <laughs> um, the lighting in the commons has, uh, that installation has been progressing. Um, kind of the first step in making the commons parking lot safer, although of course right now no one's going to take advantage of that. Um, and, uh, oh, I wanted to kind of give a shout out as we've been working on the various ordinances for um, uh, the, the parks and recreation, the park uh, the recreation committee, playgrounds, um, and these trails, uh, the rules and regs. Uh, the chief, as always, has been a great help in reviewing and suggesting uh, edits and changes to the to the text of it. He's he's always a very good help and resource for those things. Um, the fire report here. Um, I've got information up through March 31st, 27 alarms, one drill and one work detail. They've of course dropped down a little bit on the amount of time they're spending together doing work, but they still are responding to calls, of course. Um, and they had two notable ones. There was a, of course, a big structure fire on Main Street on March 4th, including two buildings. And on March 27th, a high angle rescue on the Columbia Trail in the area <laughs> of Lake Solitude Falls. Someone stuck in a tree or some such thing. Um, the EMS merger with Clinton is, you know, occurring, the meetings are occurring virtually. Um, I've attended, uh, I guess two virtual meetings or something with that. Um, there have been a few, it was an odd snag or so. I will say that, uh, somebody swooped in and took the name they were planning to use and, um, primarily just to be a thorn in the side of the process. So I believe they've now switched over to another name, which they are not releasing until everything is, all the websites and everything is acquired uh, so that it can't be done again. Um, but that is moving ahead carefully and slowly. There are a few items that are going to have to get discussed um, uh, in, the, you know, in the next month or two. Uh, the building lease and uh, some of the vehicle decisions just to make a decision so we can continue moving forward. Um, so they're just, they're trying their best to keep moving forward despite the wacky situation we're all in. Uh, and I think that is everything I had. Um, yeah, I think we're in, uh, in good shape there. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, Councilwoman Ferry. Okay. Uh, update on the website uh, that is in a draft state now ready for the commit uh, website committee to review. As far as the newsletter, the deadline for submissions is tomorrow and um, that will be a, a three quarter consolidation of the spring, summer and fall. Along with that, there's the events committee, which pretty much we spoke of most of that other than um, the fact that there's a draft of the events um, uh, ordinance, which will probably be discussed uh, over the next few weeks, along with other uh, committee ordinances. And uh, as far as the historical committee goes, I, I did mention we had the, uh, we did do a Zoom meeting for events, which was great just seeing everyone. If, if nothing else, just to be able to talk to each other, it was great. We will be doing one for the historical committee next week. Um, and that'll be nice. We haven't met in quite a while. We also have coming up with the historical committee, um, getting on the historical register, which that deadline's coming up on April 30th. Uh, the committee has been active behind the scenes in touch with each other, talking about what they can do with the different um, speakers uh, possibly doing one on a Zoom, and also uh, talking about what they can possibly do with solitude repairs as soon as they're able to get back on site and get volunteers there. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Councilman Columbus. Okay, we have some uh, new golf carts in and we have some old cart golf carts gone. So uh, <laughs> that's the exciting news of the golf course. Uh, 
Uh, unfortunately, it is closed. Uh, we don't have an open date yet, obviously, with everything going on. We'll, we'll go take that on a, um, a week to week or you know, once we start hearing more back from uh, the state, uh, where we're at with everything, I think we'll get a, um, some kind of plan in place as far as to how we would go about reopening. Um, uh, they did some clean out by uh, drainage clean out at Hole 15, uh, just um, making the line over there. So that's that's all done. Uh, but as far as the golf course goes, that's about all the news right now. Uh, and the SBA, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the EDC, the um, update for that is that the SBA seminar obviously was um, uh, postponed again. Um, we don't have any dates, obviously. That would be postponed until further notice and definitely until things clear up when we can um, get that squared uh, away again. I would imagine it would be more a, a, uh, a winter thing <laughs> or maybe next spring, depending on how things go here. So uh, we don't have too many updates, like much like events on, on when this could actually happen. Mm. Or for those, those are the times we're living in right now. So all I have for the team. Thank you. Thanks, George. Bonnie Fleming. Hello. <laughs> I'm. Uh starting investigating financing through a program called new jersey works it's an offshoot of the infrastructure trust bank and that would be something for possibly washington avenue and river road projects later in the year so i'm doing um analysis just to see if it would be better to do notes or just um or to try the application through nj works um i do have a note sale that's coming up next in in may we'll be doing a note sale for the bands that are outstanding that are maturing in june and as natalie said the newsletter is in preparation we're looking at getting that out in june uh, there is an application we have open now for a concrete pad for a generator over at well eight we had to apply to the clinton township board of adjustments in order to put this in and that hearing is being held on monday evening so we're hoping once that's settled we can finally get the generator in this is a generator that we got funded through a fema grant for sandy so this has been going on for a while hopefully we can get it finished this year um, again as natalie mentioned the website design is moving forward we do have the pre-construction meeting as chris mentioned for streetscape monday and uh, we're looking into uh, interviews electronically with the DPW position. Rick has already done some preliminary work with people that have applied. So we're hoping to um, get them online and uh, finalize that soon also. And also FEMA, we're looking into trying to get some funding through FEMA for the COVID expenses that we incurred. We'll be doing that online. And um, a shout out to Pearl Hall employees and the DPW and the police who all were just hanging in there and uh, keeping in touch and trying to make it work. Thanks. Bye. Including you. <laughs> yes, including you. <laughs> uh, okay, just so I have some um, updates more for um, anybody that's tuning in right now. Um, the department, and this is on the state level, really, the Department of Labor created a new web portal that allows New Jersey residents to contact the Department of Labor directly. I've gotten a lot of questions via email about, you know, or, you know, just a conversation about unemployment. Um, Department of Labor website is myunemployment.nj.gov. And, uh, you know, I do understand there's some people that still have trouble with their unemployment claims, so I would encourage them to go to that website. Again, it's myunemployment.nj.gov. Um, also, I saw in Governor Murphy's call today, the state of New Jersey right now has a jobs portal which um, advertise about 55,000 essential job opportunities. So I know there's a lot of families that are struggling um, information for that and you can apply online and you can screen all the different companies it's you know ShopRite and it's names that you've heard of 
uh, jobs.covid19.nj.gov. And I'll repeat it again. It's jobs.covid19.nj.gov. So if you're, if you're looking for a job, you're out of work right now, and, and you just want to get back to work, that's a great resource to use. Um, earlier today, I signed on to a letter that Congressman Malinowski's office was asking some support on, which is to allow us as, a, as New Jersey, as um, you know, Hunterdon County, to actually receive funding in the next round of the coronavirus relief package. I am aware through a call that I was on yesterday with the county that freeholder director Van Doren sent a similar, similar letter to President Trump and Mitch McConnell and Steve Mnuchin and pretty much any other big name government, federal government official that you can think of. So we're all trying to get on the same page to make sure that Hunterdon County and Highbridge, you know, an extension do not get left out on this next round of funding, which everything that I'm looking at today looks like that's actually going to happen again. And, um, you know, why I'm mentioning this today because I know we're, you know, just a small municipality, but um, if we don't get any kind of funding, we're... <coughs> We're all just going to be faced with these harsh decisions of we're not getting the revenue from the golf course. We're not getting construction permits. We're still having to pay our bills. We still have to pay our employees. We're still having to run the municipality. And eventually, we're not going to have the funding to do it, to pay the schools, to pay the fire department, to pay the county, to pay the libraries. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a snowball effect. So I'm just kind of um, asking all of us on council and anybody else that's paying attention to, you know, now is the time for us to all really work together and reach out to our legislat legislators, whether you voted for them or not, or you intend to vote for them again, and let them know that this cannot go on. We need to get funding. We're the second highest state with um, co positive COVID um, numbers. We have a tremendous amount of people filing for unemployment, and we really need to get some funding to help us out. So um, I'm just going to continue fighting for all of us on all of these calls I participate in each week, and I'm just asking for everybody else's support, if you have a few minutes, to call the legislators Van Doren, to call Malinowski, Menendez, Governor Murphy, Donald Trump, whoever it is that you want to reach out to, um, just give them a call, okay? Couple other resources um, for our seniors. There's the Save Our Seniors line, which is 908-437-8039. Um, 908-437-8039. They're connecting our senior citizens with local volunteers that can help, you know, shopping or errands or, or you know, just making, maybe you just need someone to talk to. There's also the 100 and Help line, which is 908. 7824357 and they collaborate with a lot of other local organizations for whatever you need if you're disabled you're a veteran you're out of work you're a teacher you know they're just going to kind of coordinate between you as the end user and and where you're trying to get to in the end um, there's also the Alice Fund, Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed Household which is an organization through the United Way of Hunterdon County, and um, you know, there's additional funding for those low-income housings that may just need some help, and that's unitedwaynj.org. I would like to ask everyone that's watching to continue to support our local businesses. Now, Circa, you know, Peking Walk I know is closed. It's it's hard. I, I know we're all going to support them when they open up again, but. Really, all of our Main Street businesses are really, really struggling, and it, it's, I just don't see an end in sight for them, unfortunately. So anything we can do, whether it's buy a cup of coffee or a six-pack of beer or go to the brewery or, or you know, just wear a T-shirt, you know, I think that um, they would appreciate the support. And lastly, because I saw a question that I know it's not quite public comment, but I and I'm sure everybody else on council tonight will agree, We've heard a lot of feedback that um, these WebEx meetings are really nice and convenient for everybody, and uh, I agree. They're, they're tremendously convenient for me. It's not quite the same as meeting face-to-face, -face, but um, we've seen, I think, a lot more attendance at these meetings than we would normally at the firehouse. So, um, 
you know, probably this is going to be the wave of the future. I hope that at some point we can sit at the same dais again, but um, we're keeping our options open right now. Um, May, it looks like we're going to be stuck in our homes, at least for the first meeting of the month. What it looks like at the end of the month, I really can't say, but um, we always appreciate the feedback. And I think that speaking for myself, it's, it's encouraging to see more people participating in these meetings than, you know, empty chairs at the firehouse. So. <laughs> That's all I had. I'm, I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> <clears throat> on to legal issues, Barry. I have nothing to report on tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Communications. Adam? Uh, <laughs> we have the monthly tax and finance reports, uh, the LOSAP reports, and uh, all of the trail signs. They look very nice. <laughs> Highly encourage you to take a look at them. Uh, they definitely say what you need to know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. On to the bill list. Let's see. One moment, Mayor. All right. We'll issue today, so I'm working a little interestingly. We have. $227,576.76. Excellent. Motion to approve the bill list. Move. Second. Second. Roll call. Plump. Yes. Barry. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Moore. Yes. Grange. Yes. And Zappa. Yes. Excellent. Uh, if there's no further business, can I get a motion to adjourn? Move. Second. Roll call. Columbus. Yes. Harry. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Moore. Yes. Grange. Yes. Zappa. Yes. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. Next council meeting, May 13th, 730. Be there, be square right here on WebEx, I think. So <laughs> I Bye, appreciate everyone. everybody. Bye, everyone. Stay safe, Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Okay. Bye. Have a good Bye. one all. Take care. Bye-bye. Go on.